So we're going to make an oscillator class that's going to act kind of like a factory that we plug values into, and it's going to give us an oscillator with those values. In here, we're going to export as a default a class named osc, and it's going to have a constructor that's going to build all of our different oscillators for us. And this is going to take a bunch of stuff. It's going to take in the audio context, the type of oscillator, the frequency of the oscillator, the detune of the oscillator, the envelope or the ADSR of the oscillator, and it's going to take in a gain node that's connected to our web audio pipeline for us to connect this oscillator to. Now inside the constructor, we're going to attach the audio context to it like this, and we're going to do the same thing for the envelope. Except for this one, if it's not passed in, we're going to set a default. It's going to be an object with an attack of 0 0.005, a decay of 0 0.1, sustain of 0 0.6 and a release of 0 0.1. So again with ADSR or the envelope of a sound, the attack is what goes from the point where someone first presses the key down on our keyboard to its peak volume and then the decay is how long it takes from that peak volume to the sustain volume which is where our sound is going to hold as long as you're holding the note down and then once you release it, once you release that key on our keyboard However long it takes from that point to when the sound completely stops is our release. Now we'll create our oscillator. So we'll say this.osc equals actx.create oscillator. And now we'll use the type frequency and detune that are passed in to set up this oscillator. So we'll say this.osc.frequency.value is equal to frequency. This.osc.detune Again, dot value because it's an audio param is equal to detune and this dot osc dot type no dot value because it's just a string and not an audio param is equal to type so we do have this gain node that's getting passed in as connection up here and that's going to be what we ultimately connect to that's going to pass our oscillators signal into our entire web audio pipeline but between the oscillator and the connection gain node we're going to have another gain node and we're going to change its volume or its gain over time to do the attack, decay, sustain, release, or the envelope of our oscillator. So we'll create the gate gain like this dot gate gain equals actx dot create gain. Then we're going to set its volume or its gain to zero because that's where our sound is going to start out at the beginning of its attack. And then we're going to connect this dot osc to this dot gate gain. And we're going to connect this dot gate gain to the connection gain node that we're getting passed in when we create this oscillator. We're going to put an easing of 0 0.005, and this is going to help make our transitions, the changes in our sound, uh, be a little bit less abrupt. And we're also going to say this dot osc dot start to start playing that oscillator. So we're going to add a start method and a stop method. And this start method is on this, not on this.osc. So this is a different dot start method. This is gonna start the oscillator playing. This is gonna be the start method of the actual this object that we're creating right now that has the this.osc on it. Inside start, we're gonna grab the current time from the audio context using destructuring. And then we're going to use that current time as a reference point to make all of our ADSR stuff happen. So on this dot gate gain dot gain, we're going to cancel the scheduled values and we're going to pass it current time so that it cancels those values as soon as start is called. Next, we're going to take this dot gate gain dot gain and we're going to set value at time and we're going to start it out at zero at current time plus this dot easing. So now we're going to do our attack with a linear ramp. We're going to say this dot gate gain dot gain dot linear ramp to value at time. And we're going to pass in one because we want that gain turned all the way up to its maximum volume. And then we're going to pass it current time plus this dot envelope dot attack plus this dot easing.
So what we just wrote is going to handle the attack, or the amount of time that it's going to take for our oscillator's gate gain to increase from its starting point of zero, here at what we defined as current time, all the way to its maximum value of one. So now we're going to do the decay, which is going to be the amount of time it takes for that gain to decrease from its maximum value of one to whichever value it's just going to hold as long as the key is being pressed down on our keyboard. And when we do the decay, we're going to have to factor in the time it took for the attack to pass as well. Because when we're doing our decay, the amount of time that has passed since that current time that we defined at the beginning also includes the time it took for the attack to happen. The decay is going to look like this dot gate gain dot gain. Again, we're going to linear ramp to value at time. And the value we want to ramp to is going to be this dot envelope dot sustain. And the time that we want it to get there is going to be the current time plus how long it took for the attack to happen, plus the decay, plus the easing. Now we're going to do our stop method, and this is what we're going to fire when somebody releases a key on our keyboard that corresponds to the note of this oscillator. So what we're going to do in here is first we're going to destructure current time again off of this dot ACTX, our audio context. Since we're running this function when our user releases a key on the keyboard, current time when we define it inside this function is going to refer to this point right here, instead of this point at the beginning, like inside of our start function. So first we're going to cancel the scheduled values on this.gategain.gain, and we're going to pass in current time there. And next we're going to do this.gategain.gain.setTarget at time. And this is going to take in three arguments. The first is going to be the value we want it to go to, so that's going to be zero. The second argument is going to be the time that it's going to start at, so current time. And then the third argument is going to be how much time we want it to take in between current time and when this gain finally reaches zero. So that's going to be this dot envelope dot release plus this dot easing. So we also want this oscillator to disconnect from whatever it's connected to after about 10 seconds after stop is called so that JavaScript will just dispose of the oscillator and clean it up for us. So we're going to use a set timeout for that. And we're going to pass in a function in here. And this function is just going to go this.osc.disconnect. And we're going to have it run after 10 seconds. And in addition to calling start on this.osc, we're also going to call it on just this so that it'll call our start method when this oscillator is created. Now we're going to import our osc class into store.js from dot slash osc and we're going to use it inside of our make osc case. So we're going to say const new osc is equal to new osc and we're going to pass a bunch of stuff in here that osc is expecting for its constructor. So the first thing is going to be the actx Next is going to be an oscillator type. For right now, we're just going to put sawtooth. Next is going to be the frequency. We're going to pass in the freak that we're getting off of the action.payload. Then there's going to be the detune, which we're just going to put 0, 4 for right now. We'll put null for the envelope, so it'll use the default that we set in there. And then lastly, we're going to put in a connection gain node. And we'll just use gain 1 since we already hooked that up to our audio pipeline. And now we can play notes, although currently the only way to stop them is refreshing the page. In order to stop oscillators, we're going to need to have access to all of the oscillators that are currently playing. So we're going to initialize an empty array up here. And every time we create a new oscillator, we're going to push that new oscillator to our nodes array. When killosk is fired, we need to find the oscillator that matches the key that was released on the keyboard, and we need to call stop on it, and we need to filter it out of the nodes array. So we're going to make a new nodes array. It's going to be all the oscillators that we still want playing, and we're going to loop through our nodes array with a for each, and we're going to say for each node. We want to check if node.osc.frequency.value, and remember, we're setting that right here with the frequency that's passed in when the osc is created up here in make osc right there. So we're going to check if that value is equals 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 to the frequency that we're getting passed in on the action.payload of the kill osc action. 
And if that's true, we're going to know that's the node that we want to stop and filter out. Thing is, though, these are going to have some decimal values on them. And web audio, I think, is going to approximate the frequency to some extent. So we're just going to wrap both of these in math.round. And then we're going to say else. If that's not true, we know this is a node that we still want playing. So we're going to say new nodes.push this node to add it to the new nodes array. And then when this for each is done running, we're going to set our nodes array equal to the new nodes array. So with Killosk built, we've got all of our envelope or ADSR functionality, and we pretty much have a working keyboard now. And since we passed in gain one over here as the connection gain, all of our oscillators are going to be hooking up to that. And since gain one is going through filter on its way to the destination, all of our oscillators are going to be running through this filter down here. Since the app is wrapped in React strict mode and we're still in development, the reducer actions are going to be fired twice. So every time a key is pressed down on our keyboard, two oscillators are going to be made. And when that key is released on our keyboard, those two oscillators are going to be killed. So our synth is going to sound louder in development, but in production, this problem won't exist. This is also why we're using an array outside of our reducer to store the oscillators in, because if we were to try to store them in an array as a state value inside of our reducer like that, then it would create a problem in development at least where only half of the oscillators that are created ever get stopped. You can use that approach if you want to because once you deploy your app and it's in production, it's not gonna be a problem anymore. But during development, it'll be annoying because it won't be stopping all of the oscillators and your keyboard won't be working properly. If you really wanna do that, you would just need to take off React to strict mode. But we're just gonna go ahead for right now and keep strict mode on and use an array outside of our reducer. One weird little bug you might notice is that if we're playing a note and we drag our mouse over to the right, there's one little pixel right there where QWERTY Hancock is giving us something else that we don't really want. So the way we're going to fix that is we're just going to reduce the width of our keyboard by one pixel from 450 to 449. And now, no more problem. We're also going to go down here and give this div a class name of keyboard. We're going to open up our app.scss file and we're going to say dot keyboard, give it a margin left of 50%, transform translate x negative 50%, and a width of 449 pixels. And now it's centered. Next up, we're going to get rid of these buttons and make these oscillator one controls control the oscillators that we're creating with our keyboard. 